Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of VM Blog's Expert Interview Series. And today we're happy to have with us Shahar Fogel, the CEO of Rookout. Welcome. Hi, David. Happy to be here. And Happy New Year to you. You too. You too. So I, I know the audience is familiar with Rookout. Uh, I think it was back in November that we had your CTO on the show. So we know you're helping developers debug modern applications in serverless and Kubernetes, but can you maybe go into a little more detail and provide a few specifics about what makes Rookout unique? Sure, so basically Rookout uh, enables developers and engineers to get any piece of data from their code without stopping the runtime performance of the application, without the need to write more code, and without the need to wait for redeployment. So basically, click a button, get any data you need from any environments in the languages that we support. Basically, you know, we're seeing a lot of uh, uh, struggle with engineers to understand what's going on in the application, uh, debug issues, uh, solve customer issues, and all these types of kind of non uh, feature delivering uh, tasks that fill up the, the engineer's day. And, uh, and we basically help them expedite this process, reduce friction, reduce frustration of all these long uh, and, uh, and frustrating processes of waiting and writing more codes and adding more log lines. We just enable them you know, to, to quickly get the data they need, understand what they need to do, uh, solve the issue and move on. You know, we're, we're seeing it with our clients. Uh, we're helping, it, we're helping uh, uh, engineers resolve issues like five times faster than they used to do. So, so this is kind of where we are. And, and in terms of, you know, you mentioned a bit about uh, cloud native and Kubernetes containers, uh, Lambda functions. But basically, you know, this, the, the new technologies around that, um, you know, it, it creates a lot of opportunity for, uh, for the industry. But on the flip side, it creates a lot of challenges for engineers. Uh, you know, it's very good for production. But when, we, when you look at software development lifecycle, you know, to, to reproduce uh, uh, a Kubernetes cluster in your machine is, is almost impossible, especially you know, when you're using service mesh and there's a lot of services connecting and, and talking to each other, third party dependencies, uh, third party SaaS providers, you know, it behaves really differently uh, on the real cluster than in your own machine. So we give them the ability to tap into all their instances. You know, it's seamless, completely seamless for them. Uh, they don't need to care about, you know, how many pods, how many Kubernetes, how many containers, where is it distributed, the amount of memory. They just, you know, point, uh, point the finger in the code and we automatically bring, this, bring them the data from wherever it's invoked. And, and to that point, talking about, you know, third party code and whatnot, uh, I know, Rookout has just announced uh, recently something the, the ability to debug third-party code. And if I have it right, uh, it's code that could be coming from a colleague, an open source project, or even other third-party software. Uh, it, it, it sounds like you're giving developers a new uh, superpower of sorts, like an x-ray vision. Uh, can you go into more details about the new capability that you're offering? Uh, sure. So, so basically, you know, when we think about uh, today's modern uh, software development uh, practices, we know that, you know, more than 50% of the code is not proprietary. So, you know, you write your own code, but you use a lot of third parties and open source and, and closed source and, and all types of uh, components within your application that you wrap it up together, you write your proprietary code around it, you ship it and, and you expect it to work in a certain way. But in many cases, it doesn't behave the way you want it to behave. Um, whether, again, you know, it's APIs going outside, it's code that you have not written, and also code, you know, if, if we think about uh, the new COVID era, um, it's very difficult, you know, in the past days, if, if you were to connect to a, to a, to a specific uh, chunk of code that, you know, your colleague wrote, so you would just go to his desk, you know, you sit together in front of the screen, you, you understand exactly what's going on, you discuss it and move on. Today, you're not sitting next to him and the communication becomes more difficult. Uh, and your ability to, to understand and solve the issue becomes more complex, you know, even to reach to him, you know, you have to go to Slack and to Zoom, share screens, become more complicated. So we give them the power to quickly understand even if it's code that they have not written. So, you know, you can 
if if you think about the uh, stack traces and you know your code is uh, is written but you know there's uh, tens and hundreds of uh, of calls before it even from packages that you have not seen or touched or for you it's like a black box so with Roka, we've uh, we've just added the ability to to place a breakpoint up the stack or down the stack uh, to place a breakpoint there you should not care around who wrote it and then you get the data you need from there you know the locals the the, the variables um, the, the, the traces, anything you need from there in order to understand exactly what's, what happened uh, to the data and to the data flow to, to make the decisions you need, you need to solve the issue or to solve the bug or to develop the new feature you want. And uh, another area that I'd like to try to get some more information on, if you could, uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about resilience and shift left. Um, you know, a lot of people are talking about resilience nowadays, you know, from inside the tech world to society at large. What role do developers have in improving resilience for their organizations? Um, so, so usually, you know, when people, about, <coughs> sorry, when people talk about resilience, they're talking about, you know, the big catastrophes and specifically in software organizations, you know, downtime of, the, downtime of the system, stuff not working, stuff like that, which is mainly related to, to the DevOps or ops space uh, and the SREs. Um, and and with, it, with that space, there's a lot of tools to, to, you know, to monitor, to observe, to, and, and to see what's, what's going on uh, there. But when, you, when we think about resilience, it's basically the, the ability of, of a company to, to provide the service it needs to its customers. Uh, to always give the, uh, the, the you know the, the highest amount of service and to always be able to give them the you know the, to use the software that they need and when you think about not downtime but when you think about a bug or something which is not working and essentially you know when the client knows that there's something not working it's a downtime for him because he's not using it until you fix it and and on the flip side when you th think about the engineering teams. So usually, you know, when engineering teams comes to, to plan a roadmap, they allocate, you know, 20, 30% for unplanned work, for issues that are coming from clients. But, you know, with more and more load and with COVID and people work remotely and specifically, uh, you know, digital products, you're seeing an increase of it. It can reach 50, 60%. So the ability to solve it much quicker uh, and to give the, you know, the service that the organization needs to its client is uh, you know a multiplier for uh, for the organization. So that's kind of uh, the help the engineers give to the resilience of the company and its business outcomes to its clients. And from looking into some of your materials, it seems uh, Rookout's pioneering the category of understandability. Can you explain what understandability is and how it's different from something like observability and why it's you know so important? Sure. So, you know, I've mentioned the word, probably I mentioned the word understand a lot throughout the conversation. And that's kind of the core issue for, for engineers and developers in order to solve uh, and to solve bugs or even, you know, develop new features. They need to understand uh, what their application is doing. They need to understand how the data flows are in the system. And for that, you know, just like any other function in the organization, it's data-driven uh, um, decision-making. So they need the data. Um, you know, if, if we're looking about monitoring and observability, they let you observe, they let you see kind of from the high level what's going on in the application, usually on network level on a, or, or you know, a, a, a cross pods uh, um, communication level. But you know, essentially, if you think about it, they're pointing the finger. They, they're very good at telling you you know, if you have a huge cluster, you know, there's an issue there. Good luck, solve it. You know, what we have, we're, we're the complementary solution to the observability space. They point you the finger and you use Rookout to deep dive, to quickly get to the root cause of the, of the issue, to understand whatever you need to understand on a code level. And then, you know, you're, you're able to resolve it. So, you know, we're, we're seeing the, the two elements go hand in hand. Uh, that's great. That's a... Uh, a Real good uh, explanation of that. Thank you. Uh, and and I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, as you might know, at uh, at VMble Hug, we've been talking a lot these last couple of months about predictions uh, for 2021. Is there anything you know that you can share in that regard? Where do you see things going this year? 
So I, I think kind of the, you know, the COVID world will continue, collaboration and, and remote work will, will continue to be a key element in, in how enterprises um, you know, build themselves, build the, the culture and the, you know, the work processes uh, within. You mentioned uh, in one of your questions, uh, the shift left. So you know, as engineers, and engineer organizations are kind of the biggest cost centers for, for enterprises. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're going to see more and more solutions that will help engineers, um, you know, increase velocity, increase quality, work better, you know, independently, not being reliant on other uh, sources uh, and other functions in organization, whether it's ops or SREs or, or whatever, and give them the power uh, that they used to have in the in the past, you know, in the past, an engineer would write the code, put it somewhere, uh, and he'd be able to access it. Today, he's writing the code, putting it in the CI/CD pipeline, and you know, he has no control over it. And as a lot of the effort and, and responsibility is, you know, flowing back and shifting left to the engineers, so I think we will uh, see a lot of motion in, in that area, um, also to help. No, we're, we're talking about uh, retaining uh, uh, engineers and, uh, and um, dev happiness and, you know, giving them tools to reduce frustrations and to work on the things they need to do uh, and they need to work to deliver business value to the organization, to work on building new features and, and you know, uh, driving the business. So I think, you know, shifting that paradigm and tools and companies that will help engineers will, uh, will, you know, come more and more in 2021. Well, that's great. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, I'd like to, again, thank you for taking time to speak with VM blog audience today. And hopefully after watching this, I invite viewers to go and, you know, check out your company's website to learn even more. Thank you, David. And thanks all the audience for uh, listening in. All right. Thanks. Hope to talk to you soon. Cheers.